Lawrence, the king of colour. Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen is here to help with his interior design advice. Oh, Lawrence, it's so lovely to see you. Are you OK? And you, and you, it's been far too long. Far I love the fact too that long. you used uh, Jilly Cooper as my warm-up lady. There you go. There <laughs> what you a warm-up, eh? Right what a warm-up. <laughs> um, warm I love the fact that um, Changing Rooms is back. Yes. Um, it's been well and truly revived, and I, indeed, have been uh, uh, brought back from beyond the grave. Um, I'm very, very excited. So Davina is um, is hosting, and uh, and you're back in with a. I'm assuming a, another team, part of the uh, old team there, or uh, who, you know, who's no, doing it with we're, you? We're, we're going for a complete new reinvigoration, and it's going to be my mission to make Britain bright again. So it's uh, it's great that we've got Dulux on board. There's going to be an enormous amount of colour, um, and I think Davina's absolutely right for this. She always reminds me of salted caramel. You know, a little bit spiky, but a little bit sweet at the same time. Well, there's one thing um, Davina isn't, and that's beige. Um, and, and that's what you're trying... You're trying to rid the country of beige. We're going to remove beige from the nation's palette. I think the big thing is... One of the big things that's happened, uh, particularly over lockdown, is that we've all uh, engaged with our houses. We've all put down roots a bit more, and we want to be a lot more expressive. Uh, the past few years, we've been obsessed by property values and resale and... Uh, you know, the idea of kind of understating where we live. But I think now we've all, you know, really burrowed in. Um, we all want to be in interiors that thoroughly express our personalities. And I think Changing Rooms was all about that 25 years ago. Changing Rooms was there to encourage the nation to be that little bit braver, that little bit more emphatic, that little bit more individualistic. Well, that's um, Changing Rooms, so that's back on Channel 4. You've also got My Lottery Dream Home International. So this is where people yeah. that have suddenly either won the lottery or come into a lot of money for some reason, and you help them to find their dream home. It, it's a wonderful moment to hang out with such lucky people. Oh, um, but, yeah, it's, it's a hugely successful format in America, and um, uh, oh. the Americans are very keen on the idea of seeing how we Brits do it or how we do it internationally. And we're desperately looking for uh, people that have come into a bit of money, um, that have won a, uh, a lottery or whatever, uh, to come and play with me. Um, join me as I skip around the international property market, uh, finding them somewhere really rather lovely to, to, to put their enormous bag of money. Well, it's, uh, I, mean, I would have thought because I used to host a lottery show and, uh, and I was surprised by how many people won massive amounts of money but mm. didn't actually want to spend any of it because they weren't used to having it. One lady, I yeah. think, won something like 15 million quid and she went out and bought herself a, a second-hand blouse um, and she thought yeah, that was push, pushing the boat out. Well, I completely agree. Um, yeah, no, one of the things that I, I enjoy about uh, uh, the show so far is that um, so many... I think, in a way, we Brits are a little bit canny. You know, a lot of people are just using uh, a lottery win to just put them a couple of rungs further up the property ladder. So not go crazy, um, but just find something that's a little bit better. And, and the majority of them don't seem to want to change the way that they live at all, which is lovely. It's a real sort of sense of, of understatement to it. Um, so that's discovery. However, what we're talking about now is you're going to help some of our viewers to update, elevate, inspire their home. So we're going to start off, first of all, with Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Holly. Hello, Jenny. So you've got a cut you want to find out about your bedroom. What's the issue there? Yeah. Oh, Jenny, tell us about your bedroom. Well, <laughs> there's so many colours going on. Um, I've got dark grey um, wallpaper, silver mm. white bedding, an oak chest of drawers, yeah. and a beach wardrobe with a black dressing table with a horribly decorated wall. <laughs> OK, I, can I, um, I just love the fact that you're saying you've got so many colours going on there. Those colours are grey, grey, grey and grey. Jenny, you are living in the grey naissance, um, which yeah. is a wonderful thing to do. I mean, as you can see, I, I've embraced the grey. Um, but it is all to do with making sure that you do a bit of accenting. Otherwise, you'll be waking up every morning in a 1980s building society office, uh, which I would imagine you want to avoid. And look at you. You're super stylish with your lovely uh, lilac -y scarf. Um, the thing about grey is to always make sure that you give it a, a, a kind of a piquant taste of something a little bit more mouthwatering. So something like a damson or a raspberry, uh, something that really brings all that kind of quite carbohydrate-y grey alive. And you're doing so well that I love all your different textures. 
uh, the damask, the velvets, the silks, those all work perfectly. Um, but by goodness, just start spreading some uh, damson-coloured love. Would you, the, um, the would you paint, uh, paint that uh, uh, wooden uh, chest of drawers? Yes, Why not? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, that's... Uh, get you, Schofield, with your interior design advice. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> And I the man the across, across the board. Um, so would you would you actually do that? Um, uh, uh, what's she called? Jenny? Uh, Jenny. Would you do that, Jenny? Yes, yes, I would. I'd do that myself. Yeah, good. Right. Well, well whatever you do, give it a good old rub down, and then yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All well right, done, Jenny. Jenny. Thank you. Good luck with that. Thank uh, you we've got very much. Um, we've got Nick now. Hi, Nick. Hello, good morning. good morning. Hi there. So you want to give the outside of your home a bit of a facelift? I do, yeah. My question's about the outside. So back in March, we bought um, a detached house in Staffordshire. It's 19, built in 1971. It's big and bright inside, but not the prettiest outside. So perhaps next year we were going to maybe render it or do some feature work with um, slate or wood. Um, it's on a street that's very wood, woodland. It's like... Um, in a, an area that's got lots of preserved trees, so we want to be sympathetic to where we are. Yeah. But we just wanted some ideas from Lawrence, or perhaps even a website, well, <clears throat> excuse me, a website where we can put a picture in and see what it might look like. Mm. Oh, get you, Nick, uh, you and your technology. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, you live in the most beautiful context. I mean, it, it's, it's almost like a treehouse. Um, and with those 1970s houses, you're getting the right idea talking about things like slate and a bit more timber, but my fix would be much easier and much quicker. There's a, a, a new um, range of paints which is entirely appropriate for painting UPVC. So that's the window frames that most people have got or things like the guttering, which is something you couldn't really do before. Um, so many of those kind of houses have that very, very kind of rigid, eye-catching white, white almost as white as Simon Cowell's teeth, it's what that white. Um, and I think that is the one thing that you could change so easily. If that went into a very dark kind of forest green, it would create a much, much better relationship uh, with the wonderful, wonderful nature that you've got around it. Do you like the brick colour? Would you change that? I would leave the brick colour, because I think one of the things is that, you know, the domestic archaeology of that house it was it was built of its period, so mm. not taking it, not pretending it's a Georgian cottage, is quite important. In a couple of years, that kind of style is something that people are going to be quite interested in, and there is a danger that you might compromise the resale value of it. So take what you've got, but just revivify it a little bit. And I think tweaking the colour of all that white woodwork would be enough to make it feel totally different for you. Give you mm. give give it a real sense of curb appeal without kind of dragging it uh, to a place that actually the, the original design would never really go. All right, good luck with that. Um, we've got Helen here. She's emailed in. She said, I've just uh, put down a bowl tartan carpet, but I need a bit of advice on seating and curtains. The furniture is mm. dark oak and the bay window is leaded. How do I prevent the room from looking like a hotel reception? I mean, it's bold. That is bold. That is bold. Is that Stuart? Is that a Stuart tartan? <laughs> Oof, I, I don't know. know. Our, our, editor, our editor is Scottish. What does Here's he the say? Test for you, Martin. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I think it's McFishery. <laughs> well, I'm, I, don't I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's bright. I think bold. it really is. I think it is Stuart, actually. I think it might be hunting Stuart, actually, but I'm sure we'll get, let, get letters. Um, but I mean, there's this, yes, I mean, for goodness sake, how wonderful. Uh, you know, of course, Queen Victoria was a big fan of the tartan carpet, and there's a lot of tartan carpet at Balmoral. Um, I mean, her, her advice would, I'm sure, be to uh, accessorise it with a lot of carefully placed sporans. Um, but I think the big thing there, and I think you two have absolutely put your, your nail uh, on the head there, banged the nail on the head, because it's so bold for the rest of the room. If you're going to go that committed with the carpet, you've got to own it. And doing something like a really rich dark red on the walls, or actually probably even better, a dark green, would make that carpet sit perfectly in its context. In fact, if you're going to be really clever, um, you do a lovely um, shiny gloss dark green on the skirting, and then you use a very matte dark green finish on the walls, like a, a, a felt effect, or even just a, a plain colored wallpaper. And you'll get a, a, a sense of layering texture, which would be really, really exciting. That's about the only way that you can get the carpet to work. There's no point in sort of, you know, going that far with the carpet and then hoping that understating the walls is going to yeah. going to work around it. Just You're makes the carpet stick out. 
It does. Imagine it at Christmas, though, with the tree and that mm. bay window. Lovely. I mean, Amazing. winner. Oh, yeah. perfect. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. You take care. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.